Okay, so let's uh, just go over this a bit. So we want to create the thick muscle here and the thick muscle here. In order to do that, you narrow down the knee. Uh, come down to the ankle where it's tapered and joins onto the shoe. Turn it the other way. Again, you get, create this big muscle up here. Notch it in there for the, the back of the knee. Uh, this muscle here looks a little bit too big. I'm going to have to thin it down, but that's the shape. Get the muscle here and taper at the back. And then don't forget that you got a heel down here and that it tucks in here and then comes out and around. Uh, the front, there's a nice transition so that you create that shape in here. Now the shoe itself, you can see this one's up, but the shoe itself, just go to the internet and get whatever shoe you want to put on them. But the thing here is to make it bulbous at the front and tapered at the back so that it's thinned down here at the back. Depending on how much material you take out <coughs> dep depends on how much separation you're going to have in here. They may or may not touch. Try and make this sole here and this sole here roughly the same length. It doesn't have to be precisely. You don't have to get a, uh, a calculator out and figure it out. But you can see in the, in the more finished one here that uh, the separation is, they're still touching. So you can create the back of the heel by turning this one, turn this one. Then the sole, create the sole just by putting a notch in there and it, remember if you want to put cleats in them, you still got room here to put cleats in them. And it depends on how thick you want this to be, like a uh, baseball player's boot is not like a work boot, but you could make it like a work boot. In other words, you, I always like to have a big bulbous toe, but uh, you can make it whatever shape. And you can see I just put a notch in here to indicate that that was the top of the shoe. You can give them shoelaces or not. Uh, nobody would ever notice if you didn't put the shoelaces in. Um, you could paint them in or you could burn them in or you can cut them in. It's, it's however you want to do it. Once you've got the shape that you want, then you can dress them up. You can give them socks, shorten up where you want to have the uh, the pant leg to end. Uh, they in the in our finished one, he had a or in the diagram, he had a cuff on his sock. Well, lots of uh, ball players today don't. They go right up underneath. Okay, so it could be all one continuous piece. It depends on what kind of separation you want to have in there. Uh, I more or less followed the design of the, uh, the piece on the paper, but it doesn't have to be. The other important factor here, and it's not very clear in the, in the diagram, but can you see how the, it's pinched here where the leg joins on to where the belly starts? Okay, this should be a sharp edge in here and if it's a sharp edge here, then the cloth, remember we're dressing them now, the, the cloth has these lines coming out from it uh, because it gets wrinkled up. Wherever there's a tight spot, there ends up being a wrinkled spot. So where this is going to be tight in here, then you should have a wrinkled spot in here. And then going around to his bum, uh, the same thing applies. Uh, if you want to give them a sharp cheek in here, you could, and uh, or or not. Uh, you could on this guy here. I don't have his crotch up as high as I do on this guy here. Um, you know, depending on what kind of uh, setup you got here, you could even give him kind of a bow leg by making that a little bit round in there. Instead of having this sharp detail in here, use a high sided gouge and round that in there. So then you got to work your way up to the belt and there's a bit of a trick to making a belt and I'll uh, try and give you a, a handle on that. I described it on the board the other day but uh, this is Marv Kaiserstadt. He did last year at all of his carving classes. He shows how to do certain things and one of them is how to do a belt and you can see that uh, it's pretty good detail. The critical part here to realize is that 
the belt goes across there, the material on the top half flares out and the material on the bottom half flares out. In other words, the belt pulls the cloth tight and the loops on the side sit proud. They don't, they don't get removed, but there is a top and a bottom to them. Okay, and then this cut here is for where the shirt starts to come out and it typically would puff out above where the uh, where, where it's being pulled in it, it it cinches in there and and it causes it to be puffing out uh, again that's not very visible in the diagram so to practice making a belt just round off a, a corner of a piece of wood just take and, and round it off give it a a shape that a, you know would be typical on a on a body so then uh, all you got to do then is uh, decide where the top is going to be and uh, let's go a bit higher so that's where the top of the the transition is going to be between the the belt uh, or between the top of the pants and the shirt so then the belt fits down below that okay we'll call that the belt and then the loop goes from the top of the pants and proceeds down below and we'll do another one over here and it'll stop somewhat below so what you got to do basically is leave the the loop high and start to remove the wood um, I'll use a V-tool to start with. I keep in the frame here. And we'll just guesstimate that as being the, the bottom of the, the loop. So then you got to remove that wood. In here, and this tapers down to the the belt buckle. So we'll just very lightly remove some of that wood. I'll do the center section first. Stop cut for the belt. You're going to have to edit this, Tom, because i got it running. Drop the belt down a little bit. I'll get rid of some pencil marks.
Now you can see that the the belt sits in. I could like to go in just a little bit more because it's cinched in a little bit better than that. Not very clean. When you're used to working in a different position, it's a bit difficult to get the tools to work for you just the way it should. Anyway, so there you can see there's the belt, the cloth from the pair of pants goes underneath the belt, and it goes underneath the belt on the top, and you've got your cut at the top for your, um, the top of your pants, create a bit more sharp, sharper shadow line in there. that the pants flare out and then the shirt comes into it and typically when the shirt comes into it you're going to have some folds in it so don't be afraid to shove a couple of folds in the, in the shirt to, to uh, give it the idea that it's being compressed So it looks something like that. I'll pass this around. Okay, okay let's let's talk about the uh, the details now. So you can see why it's critical to uh, get the the shape, the outside shape of the the limbs, the body, get all that shape established and now you got to dress them. <clears throat> so you're going to have pressure points. The pressure points will make the cloth tight like uh, the point of his knee is going to make that part tight so there will be no wrinkles in that. Where it comes up to the top of the body, uh, the curvature in here it will be tight until it goes down into the crotch and then you're going to have wrinkles here where it's going to be a little bit looser. Um, the, this guy here has a bunch of wrinkles below uh, where the, the bottom of his pants end. But the critical part here is to have this shape in here established. And you can see how I've done it on this guy here. I put wrinkles in here and I put some wrinkles in here as well but it should be tight through the crotch area and then there actually should be some some wrinkles in the back here and uh, it should go around to the back where his bum will pull out the material and make it tight but then you'll have a bit of a crease in the bottom of his bum there. It's the same with a, with a shoe. This is going to be all tight here and if his bent, foot is bent really uh, a lot in here, then you want to put a couple of wrinkles in the front to indicate that there is a bend in the material. The material is taken up more so in the back because it's stretched, and in the front, it, when it's compressed, it's going to create wrinkles in the front, right? So even in in this guy here, you can't see it very well, but in your diagram, you can see this is, he's got wrinkles in his sock here. Well, the reason why he's got wrinkles in his sock here is because they, in the, the guy who did this, he pushed this sock down. This sock fell down. This one's up tight, and this one's down. So it's going to create wrinkles in here where the sock is compressed. Because you got more material in there that's stretched out here, so there's no wrinkles. The other point I would make is also that you've got a kneecap in here, and I use this one here as more of an example. So uh, you've got a kneecap that sits right there. All right. So now from that point up, okay, you can when you go to on your final cleanup, and I always do go over my carving completely 
uh, final cleanup to get any of the uh, lines and angles that I don't want. So when you do that, you pull away from there and down from there. So that, that, that creates the tight point there, but if you remove the wood it, with a very shallow gouge, a number three or a number five, and you remove the wood away from that uh, tight point, which is the pressure point right there, then you're going to uh, create the illusion that the cloth is hanging that way. Uh, so likewise the back, it's, it's loose at the back, but so therefore where the bend is, you've got to put a couple of creases in there. So we'll talk about the elbow, and the elbow is basically the same thing. Where's this other one here? You see how the elbow is right there. Now depending on where he wants, where you want to have the um, his shirt to end, like is it a long sleeve shirt, is it a short sleeve shirt? Once again, it's that's the pressure point. Also, don't forget that that is the pressure point, the top of the elbow, right at the shoulder, or the top of the, sh uh, the arm, rather, right at the shoulder. Right there is a pressure point as well. So from that point, if you remove the wood, you know, from that, that'll give the illusion as to how that material is hanging. It'll be tight at the shoulder, and as it gets out further away from it, it'll be looser. So in the the crack in back here, you want to deepen that in so that the, you not only create the round in here, but you also give an indication as to where the uh, tightness or the looseness in that case is. Uh, where the pants and the uh, shirt and if there's going to be wrinkles in here, then the, the lines will be crossways, won't they? That's the way the wrinkles will be. Don't make them continuous. You only make them part way and then pick up and go in a slightly different direction. Don't forget about the hollow in here. And if, if you should be able to put your thumb in there and actually feel the hollow on both the shoulders, on the front of the shoulders. And even the belly. He's supposed to have a big belly. If he's got a big belly, then maybe you want to make the styrations in here uh, more in line with the way the be belly runs. That's pretty well the idea. Um, dress him, but create the body first. As if he's got no clothes on and then dress, then uh, uh, tackle the, the actual cloth. The hand, once you're satisfied with the shape of the hand, and I would complete the hand completely, then if I needed to change the size of the ball, I would change the size of the ball. Give only de detail is the last thing you do. Hope that helps. When I got the carving completed the way I want it, and I'm, and I'm happy with it, Sorry. then uh, what I do is uh, I wash it with uh, dishwasher soap and, uh, and water and uh, rinse it off good, uh, then let it dry completely before, the, before I apply any kind of finish whatsoever. If it's a, uh, a paint job that you're going to do, I paint directly onto the wood. Um, I typically would car paint the, the skin colors first and get all of that established. And then from that gives me a better idea as to what colors I want to use for the, the actual shirt and pants, boots, whatever. Um, but do the skin, I always do the skin cover color first. Hair is done with two colors always. Uh, if he's an old guy, I use Battleship Gray to paint the hair first and then I dry brush and uh, dry brushing means that you put paint on the on the brush and then you dab it off and then I just cover the highlights, go over the top of it very lightly until I get the, the coloration I want. Um, but always use two colors. If it's black, use a, a black background and a in a gray front or a brown front or something of a top color. But uh, always use two colors, even a redhead. Um, eyebrows, 
I always tend to forget when I carve or when I paint the the hair on his head. I forget to do the eyebrows. The so keep that in mind that the eyebrows are done at the same time as the the hair. Um, all all of that when I'm finished, I I uh, use a matte finish. Uh, and I usually spray it on, but sometimes paint it on and uh, use a brush. Uh, but uh, always use a, a satin or matte finish. Don't, don't make it shiny. Uh, the only time you want something shiny is if the uh, particular carving calls for it. As an example, the eyes. I will put a shiny finish on the eyes. All my paints are acrylic and I water them down to the consistency of 2% uh, milk. It really thinned down. If I don't think the color is strong enough, I would paint it over a second time. Try and uh, darken the color that you're going to use. As an example, if you're going to do a shirt, you paint the whole shirt and then go back over and wet it and then darken the color a little bit so you can get the dark areas done. As a, un, Say underneath the the uh, armpit uh, and places where that it's going to be appear to be darker and darken it but only a little bit don't try and overdo it and try and blend that in I use I wet it first with water and then try and blend it in uh, I think that's about all I can tell you unless anybody's got any 